always keep your motorcycle tenderized. So yeah, we're headed on a commute. Can you believe that? I know you all haven't seen one of those before. Let's go do it. Woo! She almost took off without me. Popped that clutch just a little bit. And she's a tight, snappy, uh, sporty clutch. Sporty, uh, what do you call it? An upgraded, high performance. They put high performance on it, man. They, you're gonna buy it. It's like, yeah. Let's get something that will tear up your motorcycle even more. But you gotta have that quick, that quick start. You gotta have that. When you don't have horsepower, you gotta have some other advantage. <laughs> it does help a little bit. For sure it ain't good on the old. Well, there is a torque converter kind of thing, whatever they call it, that I don't know if it's a torque converter, but it, uh, it helps dampen all the torque that you do have. So I guess it does convert it, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know legal, legal terms, man. The mechanic can listen to me and go, what the hell does he think he's talking about? A layman, another layman, uh, you know, like me, might understand, like, hey, I uh, get it. I kind of see what you're saying. All the worlds of our brains. All I can really tell you about is mine. <laughs> kind of. Then you got to decipher, is he lying? Or is he just mis misguided? Or you don't understand the truth? Yeah. There's a lot of variables when you uh, listen to the human beings. Your trust levels must have some flexibility, not only in what you try to tell other people that you want them to trust you with, but what you trust them with as well. Because there's a lot of things that can err. And uh, of course, if somebody blatantly lies to you, well, you know, Sometimes that's detectable, sometimes it ain't. Are you a liar? Well, yeah, I'm a liar. Do I intend to? No. Do I think it's right? No. Do I wish I could live my life without worrying about having to ever lie, even the smallest of detail, to convey my uh, purposes? Like, yeah, of course. Nobody wants that label, and, but when there's that time you think you want it to your advantage in some small way, um, not knowing it's a disadvantage, but your ego still telling you it's an advantage, well, you know, you do it. And when are little white lies okay, you know? Sometimes they don't uh, injure another. I don't know, sometimes uh, we need to be injured. Put my own... Uh, uh, maturity and growth into check, you know, is that's really kind of what it's more about is being mature. If you're not mature, and being around a mature person all the time is gonna, gonna hurt your ego. You're gonna have your feelings hurt a lot, you're gonna have misunderstandings, you're gonna think, you know, you're being attacked, you're a victim, yeah. Is that going to be the case today? Well, I sure don't want it to be. I've had enough of that. I'd like to surrender all that. Look at that trash. Like a cupboard or something. Broke some particle board furniture. Just fell off. Somebody lost their their valuables. And uh, somebody else had to clean it up. Push it off over to the side. Something you don't want to run over. There's a motor bomb tip on the road. Don't run over debris and trash. <laughs> yep. So informative. So helpful. I know. I am just a blessing, ain't I? <laughs>
you know, I'm sarcastic towards myself, you know, uh, in, a, in a funny way, man, because it just points to the ego, you know. And when you find the ego, you know, uh, yeah, it's not the truth. It helps. It helps you find the truth. Isn't that interesting? That's a pretty groovy thought, ain't it? I always like it. That was deep. Ooh, that was deep. Watch this corner, full of debris. Huh. Gravel, sand, when you see construction, you can almost guarantee that there's gonna be some uh, extra poo-poo on the road. Take all the back ways. It's okay, I'm in no hurry. A lot of sharp rocks. The jagged little rock. Hail to the tire makers. They can make these vehicles run over this stuff without severe damage. <sighs> Car look like it ready to pull out of a driveway, don't it? All tinted windows so you can't see if somebody's in there ready to pull out. Yeah, that sucks. Just gotta be aware, pray, and hope for the best. It'll borderline red light, won't it? Looks safe. And I've had enough delays in my life. You see how I justified my poo poo? Yeah. That was ego thinking. The ego will do that for you. It does that for you. Say thank you very much. Starting to get heavy, heavy flow. We're like a big maxi pad out here. <laughs> Trying to absorb all the heavy flow. Well, let it roll right off you. Or you could just, you know, take it all in. <laughs> A lot of stupid puns on that. I think we'll just stay right here in this lane. I keep wanting to get over in the left, but, you know, people are usually more in a hurry on that side. And, uh,. Just thinking, it might have a, more of a possibility of getting tailgated over there. So, but it beats getting tailgated by a big old blue Mack truck behind you. Is he for sure will give you a squishing? Well, a little extra space cushion, Dean. In case the person behind you is not doing their job. And that's something you cannot count on because I know I slack in my job at times. Really? Something smells burny and breaky or something electrical. Hope there's no big issue. That would suck. I'm thinking about me <laughs> instead of the person who might be having the actual issue. Yeah, we're coming out pretty slow out of the gate, man. Lord, just get us through here. Yeah, looks like we're moving all the way out of the tunnel so far, so whatever that smell is, hopefully it didn't stall nobody in here. Are we pounding in the pylon? Don't sound like it. I'd hit a hard spot. What do you do when you pound stuff in deep into the the bed and then you all of a sudden you hit an area that's no good? I'm sure they got some sort of detection and radar that the ultrasound, <laughs> ultrasound the bottom. They can see what's down there. Nothing's in the way. Yeah, I see where my brain is today. All curiosity. Got the curios going. I guess I'm gonna merge right into that, uh, tie into that uh, thing someday. Oh boy, he's in a pickle. I'd be having my hand out and everything, like, hey, let me out. Hopefully he'd be hoping for a big gap. A big gap in the traffic. Oh, it's all stopped over there. What? Should have paid attention. 
seeing why everything is all stopped up. Is it Friday? People's gonna get out and go somewhere. It's gonna be a beautiful day. It is, I hardly need a jacket. But you know, safety first. Well, I'm definitely not sweating, so. I heard somebody on YouTube or justify why they didn't wear any uh, jackets. Oh, you get so hot that you can't think right and uh, you supply more danger to yourself than if you were, uh, you know, geared up. I'm like, okay, there. First of all, I pepped right up, like, yeah, man, that sounds like a good idea. And I was like, man, if it's that bad or that hot, for one, don't travel. Get in a vehicle with some AC so you can think properly. If you're that close to not being able to think with a, a helmet on and a, a, a jacket and gear of sorts that will protect you if you fall down, you know? It's anybody's choice. You can take the risk. You don't have to wear shit other than your, most likely your helmet in most places. And uh, certainly don't, I, I'm trying to make anybody else feel any better or worse about their decisions. It's your decision. You're free to make them. I wouldn't just today not making that one. And I've done some recently, like I wear my little half shell helmet bandana over the face because I was trying to make a cool video. You know, can you motor vlog without a full face, you know, and still use your uh, purple panda mic. And, uh, found a way to do it. You could even hear me at like 80, 80, 90 mile an hour. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. Is that the way I would travel and do it? Nah, no. I took one for the team though, you know? Not really, man. I don't want to encourage anything, but this is how, that's how you want to ride all the time. And guess what? You can motor vlog. You don't have to sit and shout into a, get up on your front facing mic and that's the guy that does that too kind of annoying that's my own crap though but I think he does it because he thinks it's uh you know whatever if he likes doing it that's great I don't have to listen to it and he gets up in there and shouts into the main you know and it's the same person that'll take food and make sure it crumbles out of the mouth and got crap all over the face and have a close-up of it and you can see and hear it, you know? What do they call it? Like, I was always, you know, and I learned that stuff that that's like, that's offensive, it's not polite, that's whatever. So I don't take too much stock in that being a, you know, a real issue. Do I like it? Nope. For some reason, I don't. Would I do it? Nope. I used to get in trouble for smacking my lips at the table or doing something, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it'd be embarrassing. Like I'd do it at my friend's house and they'd look over the table at me and I'm there for the first time and eating with the family and she has to give me the, uh, the nod of the mouth and the smack and I was like, oh, oh, was I doing that? I didn't even know I was doing it. I wasn't even, didn't know. Well, it's like you're always checking yourself and trying to be good so you can be accepted amongst your peers and friends and their families and not get teased really I was just looking out for myself I just didn't want to get in trouble or get teased because there's always a punishment man always a punishment you know or your own guilt and shame a lot of that bull crap was instilled to us man that sounds it's a little helpful. I don't know who knows how it all, big picture, how it all works. I don't understand it. I mean, some things I guess could be necessary, you know, and others not so much. When you're a kid, you get them kind of confused. Looking at that little black thing down there, right there. Shut it off. You don't need it getting any hotter than it has to be. We got all our stuff back there? Yes, we do. Thank God. It scares me. I lost a camera back there one time, so I'm a little gun shy. No camera shy.
Well, I'm out already. Are we still charging? Let's see. Hello. Safety prayers for the uh, daughter today going to cross the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. And I'm going to do the uh, Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. The whole family be tunneling today. Fun for everybody. Can I cut around you? Thank you. And this is the fun we have. All new uh, traffic pattern and... Uh, good, we did not overheat. That is the whole thing. Don't let your Harley overheat. No one is getting overheated. It's like anything else. You don't want to be overheated. What happens if you get overheated? You get upset, things go wrong, and uh, next thing you know, you need help. That's what your engine will do. That just sounds like a great scenario, right? <laughs> that was your no-brainer. What the hell? There's we stop. He'd be looking down at his phone. Ain't got time to watch traffic. Might not have good peripheral. You never know. The wife or somebody or the husband, you know, might have an emergency for them. The world could be in all chaos. I'm back here complaining about a uh, two-second delay. Yeah, that's not so cool as a team. Man, the freeway is really a lot taller. Way above us. This one feels like just barely over top of the water. Now we got about... 10, 15 foot up off the water, maybe 8, 10, I don't know. Must be preparing to stop at 25 miles per. And we're doing 45. Nobody care about that speed limit. Maintain speed in tunnel. What speed is that? Oh, yeah, now we got to stop. Now we got the stopping. That was quick. Thank you for the beautiful ride home. It was short, it was sweet, it was wonderful. Ooh, got a boo-boo on that car. And uh, I think it's kind of another successfully safe ride home. The following weeder. The weeder. Not a leader, but that was a weeder. You can smell it. Huh. Takes a lot, man. You gotta be a patient mofo. Your typical commute home safe. Thank you, Lord, right? 
and uh, be looking forward to my daughter getting home, coming across that Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Yeah, I did that back in the 90s, early 2000s, excuse me. Jeez, just everything's a long time ago. <laughs> okay, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you again on another beautiful, most likely, commute. Thanks.